I have to walk very carefully because there are cords up here. I'm extremely clumsy and uh, wow, look at all this cool stuff. Wow. There are pedals all over the darn place here. This is great. Hi, I'm Chris Breen and I'm actually here to introduce uh, Sam Margolis and, and not admire all the stuff up here on stage, but I'm going to just for a second anyway. because I'm a keyboard player so I don't get all these pedals. Um, so Sam, I should, I should probably mention, is, uh, he's a neighbor of mine and he's constantly borrowing my power tools. And, um, but he just returned my drill last week, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him the written introduction instead of the one about how he doesn't return my power tools. So this is Sam Margolis. He is the manager of brand partnership at SonicBids, which is the music marketing company that connects 400,000 of the world's leading emerging artists with an extensive network of global brands, conferences, and music promoters. This includes a partnership with Macworld, iWorld, which is where you are in case you've taken a wrong turn somewhere, to power the Indie Innovation Program, which launched last October and will conclude here today. The idea of they got independent artists coming in and we're going to have kind of a playoff here. A veteran of both the technology and music industries, Sam has spent the last 12 years working in software and technology consulting with a focus on social media and e-commerce. In addition, Sam has dedicated 25 years to music as a songwriter, musician, producer, engineer, and I suspect some of that time was spent being a roadie as well for his own stuff. His music has been, treated on, uh, it's been featured on national public radio, ABC's 2020 with Diane Sawyer, and over 100 terrestrial radio stations across the country. With his band, Comanchero, Sam has shared the stage with artists such as Passion Pit, ZZ Top, and Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sam Margolis. perform, practice, play, share, and market their music. And so this year, Sonic Bids partnered with Macworld iWorld to seek out America's top independent artists using Apple technology and products to further their music careers in the most innovative ways. The Indie Innovation Program kicked off nationwide last October, featuring nearly 400 emerging artists who showcased their music and the most innovative ways that Apple products and technology have impacted their music careers. For the past four months, we've seen fierce rounds of online public voting from fans and heated debates among industry judges, all of whom have helped us to arrive here today with the nation's top two indie innovators of Macworld iWorld 2013. That's Mr. Loveless and Exist Elsewhere. Yeah. And so some of you may know that there's a big prize package that's going to be given away today. The bands are competing here for um, a package that's surely going to supercharge their careers. So today's runner-up is going to receive $2,500 in cash, a prize pack filled with an iPad, an Apple product, and software, an oil can guitar, courtesy of Bohemian Guitars, and a chance to perform immediately following this session um, the runner-up will be performing a set out in the music studio in the live zone just around the corner here. So please come check out the runner-up after this session and, and show your support. Um, and then we have the champion. Uh, the champion today is going to receive $5,000 in cash. They're going to receive a prize pack including um, MacBook Air, I believe it is, and Apple product software. Um, in addition to that, the, the band will also be I'm giving an interview tomorrow um, at 5 p.m. That's going to be in room 2010. And um, folks with an iFan badge are welcome to um, join that interview and, and participate there. And the big prize for the champion today, um, they're going to get to open up for Little Feet, who is here in town. They're going to be performing at the Macworld iWorld Blast Party at the mezzanine right down the street. Um, I believe there's still a few tickets available, so um, please be sure to come out and grab a ticket and come, come see what's surely going to be an awesome show with our Indian Innovation Champion and Little Feet. 
So we're about to see and hear how both artists use Apple technology and products in their music and careers and ultimately crown the indie innovator of 2013. And to do so, we've assembled a distinguished panel of judges who are here with us today, um, who are each going to cast one vote at the end of this session. And they're going to be judging the artists based on three main criteria. Uh, the first being the application of Apple products and software. There's going to be a demonstration and performance from both artists. And then overall innovation. Um, so those are the areas that our judges are going to be looking at. And I'd like to take a moment to recognize and introduce our three judges today. Um, first, we have the Senior VP for Innovation, Strategy, and Technology at the Berklee School of Music in Boston. Please stand up and wave your hand, Mr. David Mash. Next, we have a music industry veteran, the former manager of the Grateful Dead, the current manager of Little Feet, Mr. Cameron Sears. And finally, last but certainly not least, we have the co-founder, original member, and keyboardist for Little Feet here today. Please welcome Mr. Billy Payne. Are you guys ready? All right, let's cut to the chase here. Um, so I'm going to introduce the first band. We drew straws before this. And um, I'd like to welcome to the stage a band from Oakland, California. They were formed in 2003. Um, their album last year, called Grow Up, um, has earned numerous awards, including being voted the number one Bay Area album of 2012 by Radio Valencia. Also of note, last year they crowdsourced a music video for their lead single, 90s Children, using footage shot by their fans, all on iPhones. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm Macworld I World welcome to Mr. Loveless. Good afternoon. We're Mr. Loveless, as Sam mentioned. Thank you. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit more of uh, our band's backstory. Uh, we started when we were 16 years old um, in 2003 with a couple borrowed guitars in my parents' garage in a karaoke machine that was manufactured sometime in the 80s. We found abandoned in a parking lot. Sometime between now and then, uh, we've seen Apple completely redefine how, not only how people listen to music, but how people create music. And today we're here to kind of demonstrate a number of ways that people are creating music using Apple products. In our scenario, we actually recorded our entire album, the one that Sam mentioned, in the very same garage using a MacBook. That was something that years prior we would have never imagined we could do. We were asking ourselves questions like, how do we make an album on our own without dropping a boatload of cash in some fancy recording studio? Or how do we make a music video to promote our music that doesn't cost an arm and a leg? So in the case of 90s children, what we decided to do is let's utilize the technology that's in everybody's pockets. 
Let's engage with our fans and ask them, hey, you guys can be a part of this. All you have to do is use your iPhone to film this song when we perform it live tomorrow night, email us the footage, and uh, we'll let you know when it's ready to be seen. Since we made this music video, we've landed numerous features and have experienced just an amazing reaction from not only fans, but people who are movers and shakers in the music industry. And it's been a really exciting feeling to experience that because it's not something that we did, you know, with the aid of some big, you know, record label or, or a just a, a, a large budget. It was something that our fans helped us create with the use of Apple technology. Uh, additionally, there is some use of Apple technology on stage right here. Nick has a MacBook Pro that he uses to trigger pre-recorded samples that we use in a few songs when we perform live. Um, notably, there's a song we wrote called Bridge and Tunnel Kids. It's kind of about being from the East Bay and wanting to get out of there and come to the city. And we decided that we wanted to use um, the sound of a BART train in the song. And it seemed like it was something that was going to be hard to incorporate in, into our live set. And uh, very simply, we've been able to use this, just this computer and a basic program. And there you have it. We were able to, to uh, incorporate that, that BART train into the song. So we're going to play a few songs for you, and we're so thrilled to be here. We thank you guys for being here today as well. Thank you to Indie Innovation for having us, and um, yeah, here you go. This is Bridge and Tunnel Kids. Get out, get out. 
get past the hurt of your past Get past the hurt of your past Get past the hurt of your past Can, uh, can you get more bass and more guitar? More center guitar for the drummer and more bass, please. If I could have stage right guitar, that'd be wonderful here. guys we're gonna play one more for you and I just like to say a uh, huge thanks to exist elsewhere we've been competing together in this contest with 300 other bands across the country and as far as I'm concerned we we both won today the fact that we're both here is pretty incredible and uh, I know there's some people here today who have been voting for us regularly and making sure that all their friends and family vote, and I just want to thank you all personally. That's really incredible that you did that. So here's Wild Summer, guys. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Great job, guys. Guys, let's come over here. We're going to have a few questions from our judges. Nice job, guys. It sounded great. So I, I, I see that you use a lot of uh, what we might consider classic instrumentation, classic look and appearance, and yet you have a heavy reliance on kind of the new emerging technologies. How do you see those two things blending, and where do you see this technology taking you guys ultimately? I think that the two can actually blend very seamlessly. And the reason that is is because I think there's been enough technological developments <clears throat> in digital recording, for instance, that can simulate maybe more analog sounds. However, I also think that the combination of you know, maybe modern music production with older recording techniques can also generate a, a, a new yet familiar sound. And I feel like that's kind of been our stance on it. You know, while, <clears throat> while we do record to Pro Tools, we don't do things like auto-tune or cut things up and edit them. So there's, <clears throat> there's a mixture of both there. It is still human performance, but it's being captured with a very modern device. Next question, please. Billy Payne. Yep. <laughs> Sounds like our sound guy. <laughs> Actually not. We, we got some pretty good guys. Um, I wanted to ask you with regard to technology and fan base. You were with 300 other bands from around the country. Um, it's one thing to utilize things on stage and for writing and for whatever. How are you going to expand your audience and how do you see this technology helping you do that? Well, I think for instance, when we're on tour, just it's very important to be engaging with our fans nonstop, just for them to know where and when we are, we're, we're performing. But not only that, but to kind of pull them into the experience of being with an independent band on the road. And an iPhone is, is like a Swiss army knife for musicians, especially touring ones. I mean, not only can I use the device to send tweets and update our Facebook with information pertaining to the tour or just little anecdotes about things that happen on the road that people are interested in hearing. But I can also, if I get a song idea, I can use the, the voice recorder to just to simply sing something in there or play a guitar through it. You know, it, it's, it works as, like I, like I said, it's multi-purpose tool. It's a Swiss army knife for musicians. And so I think the, the way that Apple technology has helped us out is it's really democratized this ability to, for fans and musicians to communicate. It's made it easier for people to connect with one another, be it a fan of the music and the artist, uh, without this middleman, you know, without this, <clears throat> you know, record label or whatever it might be promoting this, this artist as something that uh, they may not actually be. So I think it's enabled us to be ourselves and communicate with our fans like on this very personal level. David Bash? So you've um, covered two aspects of uh, the music making process with the technology. You talked about the recording and you talked about the, you know, um, building your fan base and, and uh, how about the actual creative process in terms of writing your songs itself? Can you? Talk about how Apple products has really impacted the creativity and how, how you bring that to life. Sure. Um, I mean, GarageBand is so accessible and easy to use for everyone, and I can't even begin to describe how many times we've just been 
in a very organic, spur of the moment scenario, just pulled up a computer and started recording a song idea into GarageBand, just as a point of reference. And to be able to then, within moments, email that idea to all four of us and to get a conversation going about the, about the music is, is it's an amazing resource. Excellent. Thank you very much for your questions and for your answers. Again, please give it up for Mr. Loveless. Great job. And now, next up, we have a band from Los Angeles, California. Anybody here from Los Angeles today? Yes. Thank you for making the trip. This band was formed in 2012. And in less than a year, they have burst onto the scene in Los Angeles and California. Having held a residency at the Hard Rock Cafe, in Hollywood. They've performed at South by Southwest. They've performed at NAM. They've performed at venues in LA like the Roxy, the Hotel Cafe, and the Viper Room. And again, I think we have a band here who is really utilizing Apple products and technology in, in some truly innovative ways today, which you're about to hear about. Um, but they say that Apple technology is the only thing that can keep up with their creative demands. And we're about to see it in action here in just a second. Are you guys almost ready? Music studio in the live zone. And the winner again is going to be playing at tonight's Macworld I World Blast at the mezzanine opening up for Little Feet. That show begins at 8 p.m. I believe there's still a few tickets that are available um, downstairs. And we'd love to encourage all of you guys to support both of these great bands uh, following the event here today. How's everybody doing? Sorry, we got a lot of technology to share with you guys, so it's taking us a few seconds to set up here. There we are. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? You guys ready? We are Exist Elsewhere from Los Angeles, California. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, we're dedicated to using Mac technology to define the sound of our generation. Just like that. Now, <laughs> now, we've not got a lot of time to impress you, so I'll get down to it and introduce the band. My name's Noah, and I'm the lead singer. To my right, we have Luke, and it, you can applause for us. And uh, to my right, you have Luke, our lead guitar player. To my left, we have Nick, a bass player in Exist Elsewhere. And last but certainly not least, our most good-looking member of the band, Brandon, our drummer. And we're here today to tell you about how we make our music. Um, as you can see over here, we're going to be pulling up a slide real quickly, uh, talking about the exact way that we make our music. And so if we can get that diagram up there. I know it seems a little complicated, there's a lot going on there, but for this presentation we're going to walk you step by step through that entire process. Also, if you look on stage here, you might see a few guitar amps, but in reality, we're not using one of them. 
We're instead running our entire rig through iPhones and iPads, as you can see here on stage. The reason for this is instead of having to lug around hundreds of pounds of equipment every single place we go, we're instead able to keep our amps here in our pockets and in our backpacks on our iPhones and iPads. <laughs> Using the Line 6 Pod mobile application, we have access to hundreds of different amp tones and different effects that we can use anywhere we go. Let's simulate this really quick. It all begins with an idea. Noah might be sitting in his room playing a couple chords and he'll be like, you know what, this is, this is great. I gotta put this down on paper. But instead of using paper, he'll pull out his iPhone and open his voice memo app. He records a quick voice memo and then will send us an SMS text or maybe he'll shoot us a call to let us know that he uploaded it onto our public file server. And once I get that message, I can then download that voice memo onto my iPhone, my iPad, my laptop, anything I want. Start to... Can you hear me? Yeah! All right. I can play around with different ideas on any system that I want, an app that I, I use called Machine, uh, to play around with some drum loop ideas. So here are some sounds that I came up with, and I'll simulate that for you right now. with what I've got, I can send that over to Nick with FaceTime. So, assuming that I'm properly clothed, I'll answer Brandon's FaceTime and chat with him for a little bit, and I'll download the files that they sent me, and I like to use on my MacBook Pro a program called Sibelius to chart out the song, and that way I can have it as a reference not only for myself, but I can send it to everyone else. So for my bass lines, I like to use a bass synth program on my iPhone called Space Labs. It gives me total tone customization and allows me to get the most creativity possible with my part. Next up, we'll start emailing lyrics back and forth and start, and start critiquing each other's idea via email. In the meantime, I'll be playing ar around with GarageBand on my iPhone and coming up with some cool guitar riff ideas. gather at my apartment and start to demo out the song in Logic on my laptop. And one by one, we'll track our vocals using our Yeti USB microphone from Blue Mic. At this point, it's time to bring it all together. And what we'll do is we'll go into the studio and we'll take all the loops that we've created and bring it in with our live instruments. I can connect my laptop to my drum pad and start to actually play along in the real kit to the loops that I've been making. Then we'll add our live vocals to the track, and it'll sound something like this. Oh. Flash forward about a month of intense rehearsing, writing, rewriting, playing with different synth sounds on our iPads, and demoing out onto Logic Pro. This is what we come up with. We are Exist Elsewhere, and this song is called Digital Life.
Thank you guys so much. Once again, we are Exist Elsewhere. We just have a couple people that we'd like to thank before we play our last song today. Uh, first of all, thank you guys all for coming. We really appreciate it. It's very, very kind. Thank you to everyone who voted. I, I know we have a couple people here that uh, we actually flew out one of our fans. Can you stand up, Alyssa, if you're not too embarrassed? <laughs> uh, she, she was really instrumental. She sent out things to all of her friends. She's been uh, learning all our lyrics. Uh, she's a really, really uh, good help for, for our kind of movement. And we're getting big in junior high schools, so that's cool. <laughs> um, but anyway, we'd like to thank the judges. Thank you so much for listening to us. Um, Round of yeah. applause is in yeah, order, I think. Thank you. And, uh, of course, uh, Sonic Bids and Macworld uh, for uh, letting us perform. So without, that, with, uh, without any further ado... Yeah, and we just want to remind you once again that all our guitars and all our sounds are running through in iPads and iPhones. That, you, know, the you have the power in the palm of your hand to create all these sounds, which is truly incredible and which is why we use them. So thank you very much. We'll leave you with one more track today. It's a new song. We've never actually played publicly like this before, so you're getting an exclusive. It's called Unhole. We hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.
Are we back? Now. We're back. God. You want to finish it? We're done? All right, sorry. The entire stage exploded. Once again, give it up for existence. Great job, guys. So we have time for three more questions from our judges. Cameron, if you wouldn't mind. Well, of course, we learned the most valuable lesson, right? The show must go on. Yeah. Well done. And this is no uh, bearing on what just took place, but I was, in my own mind, reflecting on your amazing use of technology, which is very impressive and I applaud. And at the same time, this may come across as a bit of an old school, fuddy-duddy, granddad kind of question, but you have people like Neil Young, who's gone back and looked at his archive and tried to release it in the highest sonic quality possible. And one of his main concerns is sort of the sonic limitations that this technology presents, because you can't always capture everything that you want. So have you guys, aside from what happened here on stage, encountered any limitations with the technology from a sonic creative point of view? And if, if that's the case, what other kinds of uh, augmentations might you come up with to come around that? Sure. I, definitely one of, the, one of the things that I'd really like to stress is that technology for us serves as augmentation. And so naturally our, our setup here is what's best for this certain setup. So for example, we will do this, this lineup if we are playing somewhere that's a festival, have to get in and out really quickly. If you have to um, play something where sound levels are a very huge concern because uh, just naturally it gives the soundboard or control. For better or worse, just kidding, Sam, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, but naturally there are, there are advantages and disadvantages. And so, for example, like when we're in the studio, uh, we're still using mics made by Blue Mic, but we will probably use a very nice condenser type of thing running through an analog preamp going and mastering to tape, doing things like that. But at the same time, it's so hard to lug all that, especially as a musician that frankly can't afford to have roadies or things like that at this stage of our career. And so we may sacrifice some portability, I mean, we might not sacrifice some sonic perspective, but this allows us to be able to get out and be able to play in front of anyone anywhere. And so in, and it also allows us to create anywhere we we possibly could choose. And so naturally, yes, you might lose some of that tube tone or something like that, but that doesn't mean we don't play with amps when that is the appropriate setting as well. And so we, we, try, to, we try to treat technology as an augmentation rather than a replacement. Fair enough. Good. <laughs> it was a great sound, I thought. I mean, Thank you very much. Um, I don't really know what to ask you guys. At one point I was thinking, are you going to use this technology to corral all your young uh, lady friends that are... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, it looks like to me you've got a sterling uh, uh, possibilities in front of you, as does the other band uh, that played today. I'm, I'm super impressed with the, the way you're utilizing technology, the way you're combining fan bases. Um, I mean, we uh, in Little Feet, uh, we're in our 11th so soiree down in Jamaica this year with Hot Tuna and Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams, and um, it's fan-based driven, so there's a lot of ways you can take this um, in addition to the music. But with the music itself, um, with all that you know and all you're discovering, in that discovery process, there's always a point where you hit the wall and you go, it does this, it does this, it does this, but it doesn't do this. What, uh, and Cameron kind of asked it earlier, but uh, I'm curious on whether it's within the degree of writing, sounds, whatever, where have you found the limitations and where would you like to advise Apple uh, to take the next step? Um, well, I think, you know, in using any you know, new technology and new things, there's always going to be, you know, it's always going to be good for one thing, and there are things that are going to be better for other things. And I, but I think, you know, how we, you know, if we hit a wall, 
if we get stuck on something, like if we're trying to get a certain sound or we're trying to, you know, match guitar tones and, you know, we're not able to get it, you know, from an iPad, you know, we'll combine a lot of, you know, a, a lot of the two. You know, we use a lot of, you know, pedals and, and you know, normal amplifiers. And that's also, you know, when we go in the studio, when we're, you know, tracking, something we'll do is we'll not only use the iPads, but we'll use the real amps and we'll combine them and we'll kind of take, use the best things from each of them to achieve, you know, the sound we're trying to get. So in that sense, it's great to be able to, you know, have two different outlets to go to when one is kind of, you know, keeping you or driving you crazy. So. So it's, you know, the, the three of us judges are quite a bit older than you. <laughs> As you can see from the color of our hair, or the lack thereof. Uh, and, you know, I can really appreciate all you're doing with the technology, and, and, and as Cameron said before, you know, you know, cheers for being able to keep going and make it musical even without the, yeah. the tools. And uh, you did a great job, and that's, that's really hard. Thank you. So I'm, all, I'm curious to ask you, um, you know, as, as an analog guy, even though I'm using the same kind of tools as you, and you're all digital natives, can you, can you talk about how do you find those tools and which tools are most important to you in, you know, making your music from the, from the scratch when you first start? Um, like I said, how, sorry, how do we find find the technology? Yeah, how, how, how do you find the tools? You know, the tools. Like, you know, where do you go to look for them? How do you... Oh, okay. There's so many out there. Sure. And you're obviously choosing certain things for mm -hmm. some reason. So. Yeah, okay. So we... Yeah, we... Uh, three of us, Nick, uh, myself, and Luke, are all students at USC. Uh, and we're in the popular music program. So we're lucky enough to be surrounded by the technology that we're using all the time. And they bring stuff in for us to look at. Uh, and then, and then uh, decide whether we like it and what we like it for. Um, so that's, that's a big way that we do it. The other way is just the internet. I mean, we, we're able to look things up really easily and, and find testimonials and then actually go in and try it for ourselves because uh, you can't really replace your own you know, opinion on things. Um, so the other parts of that. And, and also one of the really nice things about Apple is it allows us to experiment all with, with all these technologies in a very affordable, portable kind of way. And so you just go on the App Store, uh, that machine app is $4.99, and it has all the functionality of a full-fledged drum machine. The app that we use to create our guitar tones is free. So that, that's the real difference, is that, is that in, an, in an analog world, you have to spend several grand just to synthesize sound. And in a digital world, just buy a little adapter and good, you're good to go. And so that, that's the real big thing for us with, with the digital technology is we're able to play with all these different synth sounds, all these different drum sounds, and it doesn't really matter if we buy the wrong app. It's 99 cents. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thanks very much. Bravo. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you have a lovely day. We are just out there. Stay here, guys. Stay here. Yeah. The moment is almost upon us. We're going to crown the Indie Innovation Champion of 2013 here. We're going to give the judges just a second to con confer, make their last, last minute judgments, and uh, We'll be tallying the votes in a second. Um, again, I'd like to welcome back to the stage our first competitor, Mr. Loveless. Thank you, guys. And one more big round of applause for both of these artists here. Exist Elsewhere, Mr. Loveless. Your 2013 Macworld iWorld Indie Innovation finalists. I gotta make this really official here. Secret ballots. I'm with them. I didn't know about that whole time. It was unanimous. Thank you guys. And again, I'd like to invite everybody here to support both of these bands. Later on this evening, the runner-up is going to be performing immediately following the session again. 
um, in the music studio in the live zone. They're going to get a full set in, which is going to be a lot of fun. And our champion uh, this year is going to be opening up the Macworld I World Blast Party at the Mezzanine this evening at 8 o'clock with Little Feet in the house. It's going to be a great time. So please come show your support. And without further ado, I'd like to announce the champion of this year's competition, Exist Elsewhere. <laughs> Congratulations again to both artists. Thank you guys so much for coming, supporting the band, supporting music. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations.